Hi, my name is Matt Cole. I'm a historian at the University of Birmingham working in the Centre for West Midlands History. You can hardly fail to have noticed that the fifth series of the Birmingham-based TV drama Peaky Blinders has come back on screen uh, and has hit with nearly four million viewers uh, outdoing uh, Sanderton on the other channel. And uh, uh, it's part of a global phenomenon in which it's been spread to uh, the United States uh, and throughout the globe uh, by being put on Netflix. Um, it's won uh, a string of BAFTAs uh, and the new series has had critical acclaim. And uh, this last weekend, it uh, drew 15,000 fans from around the globe to take part in a legitimate Peaky Blinders festival in Birmingham. Uh, it's even true that uh, the names Ada and Arthur have become popular again for the first time in a century. Arthur uh, being in the top 10 of new children's names uh, for the first time since the 1920s and Ada making the top 100 for the first time uh, in over a century. Uh, the impact of the show has been both surprising to many people and uh, uh, colossal. Um, we need to ask ourselves three questions about this. The first is how historically accurate is Peaky Blinders as a representation of Birmingham a century ago? Uh, secondly, what does it do for Birmingham and what does it tell us about Birmingham even today? And thirdly, like all historical dramas, what does it tell us about the people watching it and about Britain today? And why do we like it so much? Well, the uh, historical accuracy of the show uh, begins with its author, Stephen Knight, who is a Brummie and uh, got the idea for the show from uh, tales told to him by his grandparents about the gang, the Peaky Blinders, that was a, a real gang in 1890s Birmingham. Uh, the image of the Peaky Blinders, which you can see behind me, uh, is accurate. Uh, they were noted for their signature appearance of the peaked flat cap, uh, the waistcoats, um, a, a quite glamorous look for people from a working class background engaged in criminal activity. Um, beyond that, uh, the historical accuracy uh, extends to the, uh, the places in Birmingham that are referenced, the Licky Hills, the Midland Hotel, some of the personalities like Jesse Eden, the trade unionist. Um, but for the most part, uh, that's the, the beginning germ of the story. Uh, the rest of the drama, as in most historical drama, is built around what is going to be appealing and recognisable to the public in other ways. Uh, to begin with, uh, the Peaky Blinders uh, are, are in the wrong time on the television show. Uh, they were active from about 1890 up until just before the First World War in Birmingham. Uh, they were uh, supplanted by another gang uh, known as the Brummagem Boys. Uh, so the, uh, the show which starts after the First World War is about a generation late. Although it is true that um, uh, criminal gangs were generally known as peakies for a, a long time after the gang itself had, had ceased to be influential. Secondly, the presentation of the personalities is, is obviously uh, unreasonably glamorous. Uh, the Peaky Blinders in reality uh, were uh, hooligans. They were people who uh, attacked other gangs and attacked innocent members of the public using primitive weapons, uh, uh, fire irons, uh, knives, steel toe cap boots, um, handkerchiefs filled with stones. Uh, they were engaged in uh, illegal gambling, small burglary. Uh, they were people who were much more feared than respected and admired in reality. Uh, and uh, most of the working class community in Birmingham would not have regarded them as champions in the way they're sometimes presented on the TV show. Certainly the gang came to an end and did not become a national and global phenomenon in the way that uh, the later series, including the current series, have presented them. Probably the feature of Peaky Blinders, which is the truest representation of Birmingham, it, it is one which runs from before the time in which the series is, is set up until the present day. And that's the themes of the city's life. Uh, the fact that the city is a city built on trade, built on industry with all the conflict that goes with that, built on immigration, uh, and a city which uh, enjoys a particular dynamism and entrepreneurial spirit, which comes from having a very limited uh, uh, aristocratic elite to control the development of its business and of its population. Um, 
those are our features which curiously in, in recent times Birmingham has had very little platform to to demonstrate it is a city of international significance in terms of business in terms of education in terms of sport and of culture and yet that status as the second city of the nation is sometimes questioned. Part of the reason for that is that Birmingham, curiously, has had no major ongoing dramatic representation on television since the time of the long-running uh, soap opera Crossroads. Uh, those of you under 40 might need to Google that one. Uh, it, it's had very little voice in terms of media coverage and Peaky Blinders has given Birmingham, Birmingham uh, that voice. Uh, the proof of that is partly in the, in the uh, 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 rapidly rising tourist uh, trade of Birmingham on the back of the Peaky Blinders phenomenon. Uh, over a million overseas visitors came to Birmingham last year, uh, a much higher number than in recent years. Uh, and and uh, not only the festival, but a number of tours, a number of themed pubs, even a, a Peaky Blinders beer has been developed on the back of this in a way that brings millions into Birmingham and its uh, hinterland. Uh, this has been an important phenomenon, not inaccurately representing the detailed events of 1890s or certainly 1920s Birmingham, uh, but it has been important in establishing the identity and the importance of the city and making people think about its history and look into its history as well. There is a third question to, to answer about this um, and it's a question that is, is naturally a response to any uh, historical drama. Why do people like this representation of, of this particular period? Uh, historical dramas like any form of art work because they resonate either with the experience or the aspirations of their audience. Uh, aspirational dramas are the ones like Downton Abbey, where you sit down on a Sunday night and see a comforting story of how a nation experiencing challenges with different classes in it manages to work together in order to produce uh, a consensual outcome. Uh, Peaky Blinders is in the second category. It's the one which represents uh, a society uh, suffering from conflict, a society having difficulty dealing with hardship and, and the problems that go with that. It's not a feel-good impression of what Britain's like and of course Britain is not going through a feel-good period of its history. Uh, it's interesting that in this fifth series we have had not only the globalisation of the business uh, of the Peaky Blinders, uh, we've had the Wall Street crash, crash represented, uh, but we've also had the rise of Oswald Mosley, uh, clearly an historical figure who was the Member of Parliament for Smethwick, who set up the uh, British Union of Fascists, and even some of whose speeches have been worked into the script for the fifth series. Um, but it's interesting that a story about the challenges of nationalism arising in the face of international economic crisis have rung true with an audience at the times through which we are living. It's interesting that the Peaky Blinders have raised the profile of Birmingham and it's great that they've done that. It's interesting that they've uh, promoted Birmingham's economic interests. But it's also interesting to us as historians more broadly that they tell us something about the people who are alive now and are watching, about their concerns and about how they see the world developing. Thanks for listening. Uh, if you're interested in the historical issues around the Peaky Blinders, then please take a look at the website of the Centre for West Midlands History, where you'll find out more. And you'll find out more about the history of the West Midlands as the heart of Britain's economic success story. You can also find out there about the uh, West Midlands History MA programme, uh, on which I teach, uh, which studies those issues and ones from the medieval period right up to the present day.